Hi! In this video, we shall be looking at some problems on counting that one could expect to find in the math kangaroo contest for grades 3 and 4. We developed the ability to count as children very early on, between the ages of 2 and 4. Before we get started, I would like to remind you that you'll get the most out of this video if you pause and attempt the problems yourselves before I reveal the solutions. In this first question, we are asked to consider how many two-digit numbers are there in which the digit on the right is greater than the digit on the left. I encourage you to pause the video here to attempt the problem before I work through the solution. Here is the first solution. One can solve the problem by systematically counting every value. You just have to write out all the numbers satisfying the condition. So 12, 13, 14, all the way down to 89. There is one number in the last column two numbers in the second to last column, three numbers in the third to last column, all the way down to eight numbers in the first column. The number of values in each column can be rewritten in terms of sums that equate to nine. So if we take one plus eight, which are the values uh, in the first and last column, uh, plus two plus seven, which is the number of values in the second and second to last column, plus uh, 3 plus 6, which are the number of values in the third and third to last columns, and finally 4 plus 5, which are the number of values in those middle columns. This equals to the sum of 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9, which equals 36. Therefore, we have 36 values that satisfy the given condition. Here is the second solution. At first, let us recall that the digit on the right of a two-digit number is the digit of the ones or units, and the digit on the left is the digit of the tens. To construct a number according to the requirements, we have to choose from the ten digits 0, 1, 2, all the way to 9, taking into consideration that the tenth digit cannot be 0, otherwise the number will be a one-digit number, and both digits should be different, otherwise if the two digits are the same, uh, we should not count this number because it does not meet the given requirement. Hence, there exist nine options to choose from, all digits but zero for the tens digit, and eight options for the units digit, uh, all digits but zero, and the one already chosen. Since each of the options for uh, the tens, so nine options, uh, can be combined with the eight options of the units, times eight, we have a total of 72 uh, two-digit numbers with different non-zero digits. Note that, due to symmetry, for every number obtained in the described way, the digits can be swapped. For example, if 12 is in the, the group of the numbers, 21 also belongs to the group. This means that exactly half of all 72 numbers, or 36 numbers, satisfy the given condition. Namely, their unit's digit is greater than their tens digit. Here is the third solution. Let us imagine the one-digit numbers from 0 to 9 as two-digit numbers whose first digit is 0. That is, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, all the way to 0, 9. Although we normally do not include leading zeros when writing numbers, it may be useful to do so when numbering tickets for an amusement park. Now, let us count all possible two-digit numbers. There are 10 choices for the first digit, as we are considering digits 0 to 9, and there are also 10 choices for the second digit, as we are again considering digits 0 to 9, for a total of 100 two-digit numbers, uh, which are in fact uh, 00, 01, all the way to 99. Among them, there are 10 numbers with equal digits, so 00, 11, 22, and so on, all the way to 99, that clearly do not satisfy the requirement and should not be counted. Therefore, we take away 10 here, which gives us 90. Then, among the remaining 90 numbers, exactly half of them have their unit's digit greater than their 10's digit. So we divide 90 by 2, and we get 45. However, the nine numbers 0, 01, 0, 02, all the way to 0, 09 are also in this group, which we counted earlier. As one digit numbers, they should not be counted. Therefore, we must take 9 away from 45, 
which gives us 36. Hence again, the solution is E, 36 numbers. In the second question, we are asked to consider a bucket containing one red, one blue, one yellow, and one white flower. Maya the bee visits every flower in the bucket only once. She starts with the red flower, and she does not fly directly from the yellow one to the white one. The question is, in how many ways can Maya visit all the flowers? Again, I encourage you to pause the video to try out this problem yourselves before hearing the solution. Here is the solution. Recall that Maya the bee visits every flower in the bucket only once. She starts with the red flower, and she does not fly directly from the yellow one to the white one. We need to find in how many ways Maya can visit all the flowers. Let us draw arrows from one flower to another, and we can see that there are three arrows leaving the red flower, the bee starts from the red flower, and that there is no arrow from the yellow to the white flower, as the bee does not fly in this direction. It is important to remember that the bee visits every flower in the bucket only once. We introduce the notation R for red, B for blue, Y for yellow, and W for white. We can list all the possibilities in this tree on this slide. Uh, if we start with R for red, we can either go to the blue flower, the yellow flower, or the white flower. And so we can either have the path R, B, W, Y, um, R, Y, B, W, R W B Y or R W Y B, as we must remember that the yellow flower can never be followed by the white flower. Therefore, there are four different options for flight paths for Maya the bee, and therefore the solution is D. In this third question, we are asked to consider the cells of a 4x4 table containing playing cards of a given suit. On each move, it is allowed to switch the places of any two cards. At least how many moves should be made in order to arrange the cards in a way that each row and each column contains one card of each suit? Again, I encourage you to pause the video to attempt the problem on your own. Here is the solution. In the original table, there are three rows, first, second, and third, which do not contain one card from each suit. Hence, one move cannot solve the problem because one move affects no more than two rows while we need to change all three of them. It is therefore possible to solve the problem by two moves. Using the diagrams and numbering the rows and columns will help explain how we can do this. For the first move, we exchange the card in the first row and the first column with the card in the third row and the first column, as such. Then, for the second move, we exchange the card in the first row and the fourth column with the card in the second row and the third column, as such. The resulting square table contains exactly one card of each suit in each row and each column. Hence, the solution is B, at least two moves. In this fourth question, we are asked to consider Basil, who noticed an interesting pattern about the birthdays of several of his friends. For each of them, when the number of the month is added to the number of the day, the sum is the same and equals 35. This is not true for Basil's birthday, December 7th, because the sum of the number of the month, 12, and the number of the day, 7, is 19. What is the greatest number of Basil's friends if each of them was born on a different date? Again, I encourage you to pause the video to try out this question before seeing the solution. Here is the solution. We will arrange the information given in the question in a table. The second column is completed based on our knowledge about the calendar. None of Basil's friends in the question can be born in January, February, March, or April, since for these months, the largest possible sum of the number of a day and the number of the month is less than 35. For each of the remaining eight months, there's exactly one date that may be the birth date of one of Basil's friends. Since all friends were born on a different date, Basil has at most eight friends. Hence, the solution is B, Basil has at most eight friends. This last question asks us to consider the combination for opening a safe, which is a three-digit number made up of different digits. How many different combinations can you make using only digits 1, 3, and 5? Again, for this last question, I encourage you to pause this video to attempt this question on your own. Here is the solution for this final question. Once the first digit is chosen, there are two possibilities to choose the remaining digits. But the first digit can be chosen in three different ways, and for each choice, there are two combinations respectively. In consequence, 
The total number is 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. Hence, the solution is E, 6 combinations. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you have any comments, questions, and or concerns, feel free to visit mathkangaroo.ca or send us an email at info at mathkangaroocanada.com.